So hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thank you for taking the time today to attend our session on leverage naked traces in Kubernetes and containerized environments and for Kubernetes Virtual Summit for this opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Ronnie Shai, and I am the director of Cloud Engineering at Epsagon. Uh, we are an observability, observability platform that enables team to instantly simplify, visualize, and understand what's happening within complex microservice architectures like Kubernetes. Um, feel free to ping us uh, for questions uh, through, uh, through all of this session. Um, great, so let's get started. Um, today we will talk about the challenges with monitoring microservices and container-based environments like Kubernetes. Um, I'm sure as many of you have begun to adopt more and more microservices containers, uh, the startup metrics that once worked well in Monolith are leaving gaps in your observability strategy. So we will then see how distributed tracing fits into that uh, to improve the overall observability and troubleshooting techniques tremendously. We will also talk about some of the evolving open source tools that can help you with all of that. Great, so uh, we will start with a short background about containers. Docker truly helped bring about a new era for developers. So um, in the early 2000s, as developers began looking at way to increase velocity and further modularize their applications, we have service-oriented architectures started to grow in popularity. So service-oriented architecture were the first shift we saw towards microservices. However, they still came with their pains. Um, collaborating with other engineers meant needing exact mirror copies of environments, which could be costly and time-consuming to configure and maintain, um, especially as team grows in size. Now let's fast forward the clock to 2013 when Docker debuted. So Docker was lightweight and many development environments could now be maintained locally by packaging together only the libraries necessarily to run an application. And as a developer who preferred Linux could now easily share the application with a teammate who prefers OS X and later even the ones who preferred running Windows. So for the business, this not only meant less costly resources by managing and running virtual machines for development, but a significant increase in developer velocity. We then witnessed the rise of containerized applications in production environments across the enterprise. And Gartner, Gartner Research has shown that by 2023, more than 70% of global organization will be running more than two con containerized applications in production. And this may not sound like a lot, but that's up from less than 20% in 2019. So we, it, it's just an absolutely massive paradigm shift. Um, if we think about it, the technical world and landscape we work within is becoming increasingly complex and distributed. With over 86% uh, of enterprises adopting microservices as a default architecture, it means that monitoring tools that we once relied on are now ineffective um, at providing the rich troubleshooting that uh, data engineers and DevOps professionals uh, need to be efficient with their jobs. So today, services are traversing of a mixture of microservices and serverless components running in containers ecosystems like Kubernetes. Uh, and these services can touch thousands, dozens to thousands of entities mixed with external APIs and managed services as well. So how can you pinpoint issues and become proactive with your observability to allow engineers to focus on what matters most, that being the business? So these highly uh, new complex environments cause significant challenges across teams. Instead of leveraging uh, traditional APM solutions that can be fantastic for classic uh, client server applications, we now have thousands of services with intermingling databases, caches, and much more that we have to consider for our observability. So how can we have a single pane of glass? And not only when we troubleshoot issues as they're occurring, but also spot inefficiencies quickly uh, to optimize end users with a better experience at all. So let's dive uh, in for the challenges that are most common in Kubernetes environments specifically. Besides the complexity of many distributed components that we usually have due to the microservices design, we also have multiple layers of abstraction that we need to monitor. 
we need to be able to correlate efficiently incidents from the infrastructure layers, like the host machine and the Kubernetes service itself, to how it affects on our application. And this even becomes more complex as we constantly have workloads scheduled automatically and implicitly even by the Kubernetes engine. And in these environments, we will also usually host and manage third-party solutions like uh, Redis or MySQL databases, Kafka streams, and much on. And it's also important to cover these parts as well to gain a complete observability over your system. Okay, so um, how monitoring in Kubernetes environments look like? The main element of that is usually metrics. And Prometheus is a leading open source solution for handling metrics in Kubernetes environments. And it can, it can also be integrated natively uh, in this case. So Prometheus can be used to collect the Kubernetes infrastructure metrics that are available by default. And it's also very easy to collect metrics from hosted services like uh, we talked before, like uh, Redis or Kafka. Uh, and this is by using the ready for use exporters um, that you can just uh, add uh, very easy to your application. Also, you can have custom metrics that you update inside of your code and they will also be shipped to Prometheus. Later on, you can add alerting in Prometheus. So you will get notified when some metrics are out of a predefined valid range. And for representing the metrics and visualizing the leading open source solution is Grafana. In Grafana, you can integrate, you can integrate seamlessly with, App, with Prometheus, um, as well as many other uh, metric sources. And then you can visual the metrics in many ways. And it's also highly recommended to use out of the box dashboards of all the popular, the popular services and softwares, uh, like I specified before. And this is instead of having to build them by your own, and that can actually save you a lot of work to, to create a really good monitoring um, uh, solution. So uh, this is a screenshot from Grafana to give you an overview for those of you who are not familiar. Uh, this is, is an example of a custom dashboard that you can, that you can build from metrics of, uh, of a web server. And you have metrics uh, like the uh, page loading time and the traffic duration and stuff like that. This is another example of a ready for use dashboard that is used to monitor a specific Kubernetes container. So it uses the out of the box uh, Kubernetes metrics and also this uh, dashboard can be just loaded automatically to, uh, to your Grafana dashboard. So you will uh, just really quickly uh, get this nice dashboard that shows you all the important metrics. Um, okay, and it's also uh, important to know that there are alternatives to Prometheus, and most of them will be similar with the formats and the APIs, so you can add them also uh, uh, easily most of the times. Um, so in case you have a complex Kubernetes environment, like one that involves multiple clusters, um, maybe a very high number of metrics, many applications or teams in your organization, you may wish to use a centralized metric system that is better built for such cases and will have benefits like shown here. So it can be uh, the long-term uh, storage that can be also managed uh, easier, better scaling or multi-tenancy. And if you wish to use such a system, it's important to do a market survey about the, the leading ones that you can use. So you will find a solution that best match your use case. So uh, these are uh, some of the leading examples and each one has some different uh, pros and cons. So uh, if you think that it can be relevant for you, it's, it's important to, uh, to check uh, and read about them. So we talked about metrics, but we have all heard about the three pillars of observability at this point, and most commonly we call it as MELT, and this being uh, metrics, events, logs, and traces. So metrics are a great way for ops to figure out if something has gone wrong, did latency increase above a certain threshold, um, has error saturation increased beyond a given percentage. Logs and events may tell us why it went wrong, and, but they still lack critical context. And oftentimes it requires significant manual toil. 
sifting through thousands to millions of log lines or having to rely on proprietary query languages becomes a painful endeavor when needing to do even basic troubleshooting. But tracing allows us to see, allows us to see exactly where something went wrong and it contains all the relevant information from distributed services, so we can find the root cause of problems in the most efficient manner. And we will soon see how it works and how we can leverage it as a key part of our observability strategy. So again, traditional monitoring solutions uh, come at the expense of higher resource utilization, uh, have the ability to only collect those metrics or are a purely metric-driven solution only. And the very nature of Docker's means it's likely to leave gaps in coverage with your observability strategy. So metrics, as we have discussed, really only let us know that something has, has broken, but uh, usually not where or why. And context is absolutely, is absolutely critical in today's environments. So to effectively troubleshoot, we need more data, but are logs sufficient? And what gaps in coverage are most often seen when reliant, when reliant only on them for troubleshooting? So I'm not going to tell you that logs are needed at all or the troubleshooting with them is a futile endeavor. Um, logs can be an incredibly powerful tool with your troubleshooting arsenal, but they do come with an added cost, both monetarily and operationally. So logs oftentimes require yet another agent to be installed and managed in your environment. And oftentimes you're having to define local growth patterns or regexes to hopefully match on uh, specific patterns in the logs. Furthermore, they can be incredibly expensive when accounting for data aggregate costs out of uh, cloud environments to log aggregators. You also have to hope that developers have accounted uh, for properly logging out of the data that will be helpful when really troubleshooting. And that means there is a huge potential for spotty troubleshooting data or conversely too much data causing paralysis from over analysis. So logs also uh, lack key context to critical metrics, event and traces. Um, so event and traces requiring engineering engineering to manually search and scroll uh, through million, uh, millions of lines to hopefully spot the why and then the where of a failure. And without distributed tracing, it's common to spend hours of scrolling through logs and searching for the potential exception. I'm hoping you will be able to spot the needle in the haystack. So uh, we understand that context is always key with any type of data point. So how can we ensure that we're correlating metrics and logs? And how do we further correlate the data between all distributed services within your environment? Surely there has to be a better way. And this brings us to distributed tracing. Really, it's a more modern application performance monitoring or APM solution. So I'm sure you're all hearing a lot about tracing lately. Um, many vendors offer some form of distributed tracing, and even many service meshes are now built with support for it natively. There are also dozens of open source solutions, and some of which are born out of huge enterprises. However, um, where did it begin and why? Distributed tracing was born out of Google over a decade ago, and it allows engineers to trace the specific path of a, a request makes through services. In fact, it helps shine a light on that needle in the haystack that logging or metrics alone usually can miss. Just because your application is made up of, say, 15,000 services, it doesn't mean a request will travel through every, one, every single one of them. At best, it will travel through a fraction of the services. And beyond this, distributed tracing becomes a fantastic way to start determining where in your stack time is being spent. If it's taking two seconds for a response, is that um, due to maybe time being spent in a database query, or maybe is a service text on memory and unable to be as performant as we'd like to? So um, some order was brought to the distributed tracing landscape with the inter introduction uh, of open tracing and open telemetry. Um, so you can utilize these um, open source standards and frameworks to implement distributed tracing and also many open source libraries uh, as well that you can also use. 
And Yager and Zipkin are then the leading open source systems for collecting and analyzing the traces. And it's important to know that today you also have a built integration for the systems and for, sorry, for the systems within Grafana. However, you should also know that sometimes tracing requires heavy lifting and maintenance. And therefore, it is encouraged to find the existing tools and libraries that match you the best. And usually it can save you some tedious work. So invest in adding automation to the tracing process wherever possible. And this way you could have a monitoring solution that you uh, won't need to constantly maintain when your application changes and evolves. Um, great, so in this about the tracing to understand more about how it works, uh, you would uh, usually like to implement every external API call within your code. Uh, and this is how you create the building block of traces and those, those are spans. Um, you should collect and include in your spans all the relevant information uh, from these API calls and many times including the payload. So then you will have all the information that you need when you troubleshoot the error. And by injecting and extracting identifiers to the span contacts and to API calls, you can then correlate the spans that are coming from remote services. And, and now we will really shortly see, see how it works in action. Um, I want to show you an example of how we will be able to use distributed tracing to troubleshoot an issue in this application very efficiently. So let's see what application we have. This is a virtual shop and user have just a simple API that they can send orders for items and later they can uh, see and track these orders. So uh, we have a simple HTTP servers on a Java container and it runs on a Kubernetes cluster. We use OD0, uh, that's a third party solution for authentication. And after requests are being authenticated in our server, it will push the orders to a Kafka stream. Um, and this stream is, is like a queue and it's also hosted on our Kubernetes cluster. Lastly, we have another Java container that will pull the stream and will update uh, the orders on a DynamoDB table. And if you're not familiar, it's, it's just a managed key, key value database service that runs on AWS. So our issue is that users complain that sometimes orders are, are sent, um, but the times are, but sorry, but the items are not being added. So um, we, we want to understand what's, what is happening and we will first use metrics and logs to debug this, uh, this problem. Then we will go to distributed tracing. So, um, at the beginning, we decided to check the Kafka stream metrics on Grafana. So this is the, the Kafka dashboard. And at overall, it seems that the stream behaves normally. We don't see any indication of an error. Mostly we have metrics that uh, show the performance of the queue and the overall uh, behavior, behavior. And we don't see uh, anything out of normal. So we don't see uh, uh, anything that can help us here. We decided to go next to the DynamoDB metrics. And those are saved in the AWS console. So uh, we check this metrics and this specific metric about the user errors on the table um, uh, help us to notice that actually some of the API requests that we, that we make fail. And then we start to think maybe it's related uh, to the error that uh, the users uh, complained, um, but why did they fail? We can't really say by this metric. So, uh, the next thing that we decided to, to do is to check the logs. Um, we go to the logs of the container that writes the items to the DynamoDB table. And usually we will have many irrelevant log lines and also different errors that were uh, printed. Um, so maybe we decided to filter only for errors and then this specific error caught our eyes. Um, it seems here that sometimes writing items to the database fail due to uh, a missing key. So you, you can see the exact, uh, exact exception here. We then check the code to find out that the ID that is specified here, the ID field is the primary key of the table. Um, and as we can see, somehow it's sometimes uh, missing. 
And at this point, we will usually have to manually check the code flows and understand uh, what uh, may cause this problem and what's going on, um, what, make, uh, what made our code to make uh, such an API call. Um, so this is the point where we don't find any more information in our metrics or logs. But actually, if we use distributed tracing, it could be really help us to, um, to troubleshoot this issue much more efficiently. So first of all, with distributed tracing, we can easily filter the traces with errors on the DynamoDB table. So after we find out we have this kind of, uh, of errors, um, by a simple um, tracing, we can find it um, and we didn't have to filter the unstructured log lines. So this is already much better. And now we want to understand the flow that caused our code making this invalid API call to the DynamoDB table. And we can now check the input message that was received from the Kafka stream. So this is an example of how we also trace the payloads from our application. And by going to the Kafka trace, we can see that the username field um, is set with an empty string. And we can quickly understand that this is probably related because uh, as the developers of, of the application, we know that the partition key of our table is actually the username. Um, so how comes that this field was not set by the server that produced the message? And luckily, we can also go back to check the trace of the specific um, call to the HTTP uh, server that handled the original client request from our user. So by exploring this API request and going to the API request to OT0 on the, uh, for the authentication, we can now easily see that the, 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 the authentication actually failed, um, but our server did not handle that properly. Instead of returning an authentication error to the HTTP client, um, this error was not handled and a malformed message was produced to the Kafka stream. Um, so this example shows uh, how efficient distributed tracing can be, especially when it comes to root cause analysis, because the root cause of the issue is this invalid handling of authentication problem and not the, the invalid API call that we find by the metrics and the logs. Um, so this is um, a, a good example of how distributed uh, tracing can really help you to monitor your, your applications um, when you use microservices. And we can also see that monitoring a third party APIs like Code Zero um, might be very uh, important and tracing can be easily used for that to generate application performance metrics. So in this case, we can easily create a metrics for all the API calls that we uh, do to Auth0, and then we can get a, a good metrics for our application performance that we can really rely on. And these metrics are very useful to gain a picture of your service performance um, in an overall. Um, great, so to sum things up, um, Modern and distributed applications are, and containers workloads require more than just monitoring for the web transaction time or error rate. They need to be able to pinpoint that needle in the high stack for us. And distributed tracing is crucial in today's modern environments. So the most important tips I can give you in regard to that is you need to test and familiarize yourself with different tools. And as we've seen, there are quite a few. And you need to create an observability strategy when designing your system. Um, so you will have a good monitoring solution. And it's important to try to avoid any additional manual work to adapt your monitoring solution as your application constantly changes and evolves. So keep that in mind and, and invest in finding the right tools for you. And that's it. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time today and tuning in. And as a special offer, you can visit epsagon.com forward slash Kubernetes virtual. It's K8S virtual. And you will have a chance to win a drone and a one in a 10 chance to even get an Apple Watch as well. Uh, okay, and again, thank you for your time and feel free to visit our booth in the AWS uh, pavilion and reach out with any question. 
and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.